How's it going, guys? Time for video number two. First of all, if you haven't seen my other video, uh, I'll put a link right about here. Sounds good. Yeah, right there. Click that link. Check out the other video where I show you the new gun. Uh, it's not a new gun in total. I just got rid of the flatline for the Apex 2. Um, and a lot of other parts had to come with it. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, actually, was... Uh, a lot of people ask me a lot of questions like, well, the number one question is how much? Right now, this gun is sitting at $1,467 and some change. And it's been over, you know, nine years I've had this gun. Only, only eight years of it, though, I've actually been customizing it. But the uh, people are always like, oh, my God, how do you spend that much money on an A5, you know? Good Lord. Uh... What does it do? Does it transform into a motorcycle? I mean, come on, you could have bought a real gun. Yeah, I could have bought a real gun, but I couldn't shoot you with a real gun. I've seen guys do much more insane things to guns. I've seen them do, they mill their own parts, you know, and, and make a, you know, a grenade launcher that really shoots grenades or something. I mean, they've done some crazy things to these guns. I've seen, these are just store-bought parts put, in, put together in the proper proportion. A lot of these parts are pretty unique because I go and find strange parts on purpose to say I, I want something that no one else will have on their gun. And a lot of these parts people do have on their gun now. Eight years ago they didn't. Now some of these things definitely nobody has them now. But one thing I want to talk about, and I'll use start an example, is just the Apex 2. Well, okay. When I got the gun, I bought the flatline barrel. Because back then, this is the only way to do that. But now, eight years later, I needed the uh, Apex 2 to get that on there. Well, I already have the grenade launcher. I already have my rail armor. I don't want to get rid of that stuff. So, I need a shroud. I needed a shroud. I had to get a very specific shroud. I gave all my reasons for giving that sh getting that shroud on my previous video. So, go watch that. Rewind the video and get that link that's right here. Um, but I had to get a very specific shroud. So, we got a $50 part right here. 50 60 bucks. Now we got another fifty dollars I had to buy to get this this part. Well, now that I have the shroud, there was a lot of skepticism whether the barrel that comes with the Apex Two was going to fit because it's might have been too short, and the eighteen inch would be like out here and it'd be just ridiculous. I don't want to do that. So, well, what do I do that now? Well, somebody comes up and says they make a twelve inch barrel for the the uh, Apex Two because the one that comes with the fourteen is actually eleven inch because this guy adds three inches at the end. Oh, okay, well I'll get that. Another 50 bucks. So now a $50 part is now a $150 part to get all this stuff to work. Um, that's, I mean, that's the thing about this industry. It's like every time I go to buy something, I need seven more parts to make it really work. Um, scope. Let's talk about the scope. This is a cheap $30 scope. You can buy it at, like, you can buy it at Walmart. It's just a cheap scope. However, $30 scope, it was $20. I think it was more. I think it was like $25. Okay. $25 it says on there that I paid for these caps because the caps that it came with, they just slid on and off. You had to put them in your pocket. And I was like, I'm going to lose those. I need some flip-up caps. So you got $25. Bucks. Get the thing home. Get it all working. And I'm like, sweet, let's put it on. Well, the tilted angled sight here, line that I have here, sight rail here, it doesn't fit this scope. It, this scope needs a Picatinny rail or a Weaver rail, and this thing only is a dovetail. So, great. So now I had to find adapters, and those things were, where is that? Like, that's like another 10, 15 bucks plus shipping and all that, just to get the scope on the gun. And of course you needed the tilted, uh, scope mount because the hopper's in the way. And granted, I could have bought an offset hopper, but back eight years ago, I couldn't do this. Plus, it gives me the second rail for the flashlight. Well, now I need a flashlight. And now I need a flashlight mounting bracket. I don't know what those costs are, but yeah. So, parts just keep adding up as you, as you do something. When I wanted the magazine, first of all, I started out with, you get the plastic grip that comes with the A5. I replaced that with aluminum because it's stronger and it was a little longer, so I thought, okay, that's cool. I don't want any plastic parts on my gun anyways. Now that all these guns are made out of plastic, but wanted plastic gone and aluminum. Now, eight years later, I was like, oh, look, you can buy magazines that 
come off. All right, so let's get one of those. So this gets thrown away, basically, after I've already spent money on it, and probably 25 bucks again. Get this for 80 bucks. Put it on. Like, it's all cool, but, you know, it's just not unique enough. So, now we get online, find another one of these, and that's in one of my other videos. 20 bucks. And a, uh, and a little uh, double maggot clip here, 10 bucks. So it just adds up, you see? It just keeps building and building. I've got the e-grip on there, you know, which throws away the old grip, put the e-grip on. Uh, and then eventually, at one point in time, I put a double trigger on there. Oh, this is a plastic double tri trigger, and I already stated I hate plastic, so. Um, you take this off, get the nice blade trigger, so you can get that really sensitive fire and all that stuff. Uh, and that's aluminum. Yay! Uh, so you put that on instead, you know, and that's another $35. So, $170 bucks I paid for the e-grip a long time ago. I get the e-grip, I want that trigger. Also, I got a drop forward mount because if you don't have that, you have a big hole in the bottom when you take the, when you take the, uh, uh, CO2 adapter off. I had to get a new valve for the remote line because I did another video about that, but the remote line was, was not really working out for me that great. Uh, and then you talked about the stock. Stock right there that took me forever to get a hold of. Um, you know, you just sort of fold that around, but then <laughs> got a few more. 50 bucks a pop right there. So 50, 50, 50. 150 bucks for a $50 stock. Um, the reason I went to these is, oh, well, I can't get into that, but they're terrible. These are terrible. If you get one of these, all right, and it has the tension adjuster in the back, throw it away and get a new one. It is a terrible design. Yeah, and now the e-grip, i got to get rid of it and get a uh, selector switch e-grip. So that's going to get thrown away in another 150 bucks. 130 bucks. Um, oh, yeah, so since the flat line, I got the flat line. 150 bucks when it was new back then. Now you can get these for like 80. And they come with the shroud. Back then, it didn't come with this shroud. I had to buy the shroud separately, put it on myself. The shroud was, man, 20 bucks. So now you got 150 plus 20. It just adds up. And then, oh, wow, well, and this guy, I got the new shroud. I can't use this anymore, which was the for the sling. That clipped the sling on the front. It worked really great for the flat line because it fit perfectly on there. But now, because it's a piece of Velcro wrapped around it, this thing has these threads. You can't really see it, but there's a this little knurled ring that locks the shroud in place. And if you were to wrap the shroud around that, or this little cloth around that, well, then you're risking twisting it, and the whole front of your gun falls off. So I had to go and find the A5 ring clip right there and install that. So that's like that comes with like the new A5s and stuff like that. And now I can just mount my sling to the front of that. So that's how you end up. And I did a little mouth calculation of what so far I have I have spent, not how much each the gun itself, each part on the gun, net worth, what I paid for it, not what it's what you can get them for, but what I paid for them is $1,467.84. With uh, all the parts I've thrown away, I've thrown away $340 worth of parts that I've bought, installed, and then later decided this sucks, got rid of it. Which I can sell this, obviously, but for like 50 bucks. The, uh, with all of that stuff I threw away, I threw away $340.93 bringing my total actual expenses on this thing out to $1,808.77. So, not a cheap hobby, but what hobby is, right? But yeah, so when you're, when you're looking to customize a gun, these are the things you got to think about. You got to think, hey, um, you might look at a part and say, oh, wow, that's so cool. It's 50 bucks. Yeah, that's great. Especially since most of the stuff you have to order online anyways, you pay that 50 bucks, it arrives, you put it on, and you realize, oh no, there's a problem. I gotta buy this now. 
you buy that part, you get that part on. Oh no, there's a problem. You gotta put that part on. I know a lot of stuff on here is cosmetic. Now it's really nice to see, you know, I'm getting a lot of versatility because I got the Apex barrel and that's actually gonna improve performance. Uh, uh, I want a new scope now. Uh, fell in love with a scope online, but you know, that's just gonna, I, I probably won't buy it just on the principle of this is, you don't really use it anyways. And a lot of this stuff too, you gotta go back and watch my reviews and understand and say the grenade launcher, I had I had to buy this shroud. I had to go through all the misery of this shroud. It took four weeks to get it. I, I li no no joke got stuck in a tornado while trying to get a hold of it. It's all in the other video. Uh, it was a maddening situation. It's kind of difficult to get on the gun, and once you get it on, you never ever want to take it off again. You don't even want to loosen it. Nothing. You don't even want to take the barrel off. I just want it permanent like this because it's such a nightmare. Uh, you get the grenade launcher. You pay. Fifty to eighty dollars for each grenade. Uh, in the end, you know, you pay all this money. And I'll tell you one thing: this thing is not practical. There's no use for this thing at all. It's just cool to have. So you just—it's really you gotta you gotta think about. And it's an investment and everything like that. Uh, another thing I was thinking about the other day is if you, a lot of people are asking me questions about magazine-fed systems. I got the first strikes to play with them, and uh, I just fired one of these in the grenade. Got yeah, fully powered grenade. Oh, I got I got gay and giddy for a minute. I was like, oh my god! I was so excited over that thing. It flew like a rocket. So, yeah, I just turned my grenade launcher into a rail gun. So, yeah, but I was thinking about the magazine feed system. Tiberius arms, these are cool. I like them. Good, good job. But they're not at all practical. you got to pay $900 for a gun with a magazine that holds... 15. You can't fire them full auto. You have to have a big field or you're just wasting it because they're, they're too hard to shoot up close. So you got to have a big field so you can use the sniping ability of it. Um, and you got a magazine with 15 shots. That's $50 a magazine. 15 shots isn't going to last you anything in any game, so you've got to have more magazines. you got to buy $50. You already paid 900 for the gun. Now you've got to buy 50, 50, 50, 50. I'm not going to do any math there. It's a lot. you got to load them all individually each round. You can't just, you know, dump and go. you got to... It's, it's, it's just like, wow. Like, I would want one, but I would probably never use it just on how complicated it would be to use. It's cool, but it's just not... It's, there's no reason to play like that. I would have one as a backup gun, maybe, but, like, I would think any... I go out on the field, and some guy's got a Tiberius Arms gun that he's like, oh, I'm going to snipe people. I'm just going to turn this gun to full auto and be like, hey, I'm dumping 300 rounds into my hopper right now. <laughs> one of them will get you while you're sitting there aiming carefully, you know? I, it's just... Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about this sport. You buy, you, you know, something that's cool, something that's neat, and you end up spending three times as much as you plan just making it work the way you want it to. That's how you end up spending that much money. And it's, that's a warning to anybody that's considering, you know, customizing a gun. It's not cheap. Um, to most of you, I tell you, you know, I'm like, oh, get an A5. They're nice and cheap. If you want it to work like this and look like this, it's going to cost you. But, but do it like I did it. It took nine years. I paid, according to my math, that's 50 cents a day I paid. All right? Uh, granted, yes, I'll sit down and pay 131 one month, and 50 the next month, and 30 the next month. It, it, it changes, but it's just not it's not cheap. But what hobby is so? But that's how you end up spending that much money. Just to answer all your questions, I know that was really complicated, but thank you for watching all that, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.